Hey everybody, welcome to Team Thrive. Welcome to Team Thrive Weekly Calls. It is April 18th and we are just thrilled to hang out with you every Sunday. And I'm turning the floor over tonight to one of our top coaches on our team, Yuni Weissman. Um, please take it away. Let's welcome all these new people. Let's welcome back the basics and knock our socks off. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, uh, there were a lot, we kind of realized, a lot of uh, newbies in the, in the last month, more than, than uh, I guess, months before. And we, no different than everybody else, sometimes need a refresher, those of us who have been here for a while. Um, and we felt it was a good time to kind of go back and re-embrace the bunnies because um, as either you're learning now or when you have seen moments of progress, those times when you are, ah, uh, yeah, everybody put yourselves on mute. I can do the same. Um, I wanted to go back to the four pillars, the four, the four bunnies as Alana refers to them. So for those of you who are just starting out and who don't yet yeah. really know what that is and keep hearing the term bunnies, it is not just because we eat a lot of vegetables. Um, she has the four pillars. She used to, when she first got started as a nutritionist, she would give people their, uh, the basics and the pillars of her program. And she realized that every time she was holding up two hands, it looks like two bunnies. Um, and the more that you embrace these four pillars into your lifestyle, the more you will see sustainable weight loss. Um, and I'm going to go through each of them. You don't want I will start off saying that at different points, I think everybody has had points where they're stronger in certain pillars than, or certain bunnies than others. Um, but there is that moment where you may realize, and it's, it's not all or nothing. I'm not telling you to throw it all out if, you, if certain areas are harder for you, but to continue to push yourself, to continue to challenge. Yeah. Wait. Lily muted everybody and that included Yoni. Yoni got Sorry. her mute. One second, she's done. Sorry, it was I'm good. a lot of um, Basically, what I'm saying is that in the exact areas you are having those troubles are the exact areas I want you to push yourself. The, um, I mean, it's now the joke that I'm water woman and it was the hardest thing for me to do in all of to be, telling me to eat more veggies, not a problem. Tracking, fine. Putting myself on a scale, got over it quickly. Water was the hardest part for me um, along my journey, even though, and now we'll go to each of them, that, you know, water first. So let's go to, let's, let's start from the first of the bunnies, or I should say, let's name all the four bunnies. So water first. Water first is the first bunny. Veggies most. The scale and tracking. Okay, so those are our four pillars. Those are the four things that should become your best friends. Um, and I just wanna go through each of them on a basic level and then we can, we can talk about them, I guess, a bit more. Um, as far as water first, how much water should anybody be drinking? Each of you is different. Each of us weighs a different amount. Each of us has a different goal. Water to begin with before you get how much, why? We are all looking to have a healthier lifestyle and water is the starting point. Your body loses weight basically in two ways. And I'm not gonna say there's a third way, breathing, it's negligible in the, in the sense of weight loss. You either are sweating or you're pooping. Sorry, well, let's get, get straight into it right at the beginning. And if your body isn't in a state of regularity, you are gonna stay literally stuffed up for the time that you're trying to move things through your body. Water helps you feel full. It also helps flush you out and keep your body moving. So how much water should you be drinking? Take your weight in pounds and divide it by two. Half your weight in pounds is what you should be drinking as a minimum, and I wanna be clear on that one, minimum per day. When I say, for example, somebody weighs 150 pounds, the lowest amount they should be drinking in a day is 75 ounces. More water is simply going to equal more weight loss. Now, 
the question or comment that many of us have gotten, or you may get yourself is, you're gonna get water poisoning, there is too much water, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The amount of water that you need to drink to get water poisoning, let me just explain it because this becomes the thing where it's a pushback that many people have. Adi just said uh, earlier today that she was getting it from people herself. Hypnotremia is something where there is too much water going into your body in a too little of an amount of time. If you are coming to us and saying you are drinking 10 to 20 liters of water, we will be very upset with you. So if you're getting pushback, you can let them know, don't worry, I am not having 10 liters of water a day. We've now dispelled that whole silliness. There is something to how fast you drink. It doesn't mean you will not get hydrated. You will not get hydrated as well. If you imagine um, a hydration pipe that runs through a bunch of plants, if I try to pour a whole ton of water on it through it at a very fast pace, some of it will come out the holes and the plants will get hydrated. Some of it will just run out the other side because it's going in too, fit, too fast. If I actually have it go in at a slower pace, then most of the water will be getting to the plants, not oversaturating them, giving them that water so they can soak it up at the right way. Your body is the same. If the water's coming in too fast, not only is it going through too fast, it's flushing out many of the things that you need in your body. So if you stick to about a liter in an hour or less, that's, that's kind of your, your frame, that's what your bladder and your body should be holding. More than that, that is overhydration. You shouldn't be drinking that much within an hour, except now that we're going into summer. So going into summer makes a difference. The easiest way, find a bottle that's a liter. Find a cup that's a liter. I can pick up six more things that are sitting here, but find a cup that works for you. And I will tell you, I found out from my own challengers this week, this is intimidating to some people. This is a godsend to others. But find a cup that helps you drink more. The other thing that's important is to realize it doesn't only have to be water. I will encourage you that before every meal, that water that you drink, whether it's eight ounces, 16 ounces, or a liter, before every meal, make that just water. You want to have some things throughout the day that are just water. But if other times you find that making an tea and you have a flavor of tea that you like, it's great. Guys, you are on. Make sure you mute yourself. Okay. If you have, and I, I literally actually just showed the other coaches that I, these are my summer drinks the entire day, except when I'm having water. And I drink them cold and water goes in so much faster than anything else. In case anybody who's in Israel here who wants this one, there is a le lemon nana tea. It just tastes like mint lemonade. Um, and iHerb has a bunch of crazy flavors, vanilla chai, decaf chocolate hazelnut. Make it a hazelnut, make it a decaf tea with a bunch of ice. You will see, you will drink it faster if you're someone who doesn't Water doesn't do it for you. Find flavors that work. Test different things out. You will see that you will be able to get more water in just from that. Now, as far as veggies, I'm gonna go back to water and for uh, some other things, but I wanna be able to get to all the, the points I wanted to discuss. Veggies most. Veggies and water are like the two siblings. Those two together are what's gonna keep you regular. Veggies will also help you feel satisfied. If you've seen any pictures, if you look at, for example, 200 calories of uh, French fries and 200 calories of vegetables, it is obvious which one is gonna keep your stomach feeling full. It doesn't mean you can't have things that have less calories or a treat at some point. But when you're looking to fill a meal and to fill yourself so that you're feeling satiated, things that are bulkier, and have more nutrients in them are obviously going to keep you uh, satisfied longer. And find veggies you like. I've heard this before. Like I don't really like veggies. 
And I know Ayala has said the same thing. Have you tried every veggie that exists, every way that it's been prepared? The answer is no. There are people, and I know in Israel, like kohlrabi is like a go-to and it's not, or it doesn't seem to be a very popular vegetable in the States. Try it, see what it is. It is a very crunchy kind of vegetable that in our house, fly, we fly through it. It is also very high in fiber. So we're going back to that same thing. The more regular you are, the more you're going to the bathroom, the more the weight does come off. So when you see that there are vegetables that keep you full, uh, somebody wrote here, and this is a perfect one, eggplant. Uh, one, of the, one of my, if anyone's seen my Instagram on a Saturday night, an eggplant is very filling. There is a meaty type texture to it that's, that's very, very, um, yeah, filling is the only word I can think of, where you put simply sauce and cheese on top, that's a dinner. And it's, you can eat the entire eggplant and it really is a veggies most type of dinner. I put a meat sauce on top. I, there's so many things you can do with it. Right, so Yoni, it means going, go ahead. Sorry, finish, no, 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 finish. No, I, was, I was just gonna it, say It means that. going through yeah. different vegetables and trying them. And part of the importance also is, and I, and I said this before, tasting the rainbow. There's someone who said, I really only stick to the green veggies. Then you're only sticking to the vitamins you really get in the green veggies. Each of the vegetable groups by color actually offer you different things, whether it's the red ones give you vitamin A and magnesium and antioxidants. Uh, the green ones give you potassium and I, many, many, I could go through the whole list, but each of these groups are actually giving your body something else. So vary what you're eating because you're gaining different things from those vegetables and you may find like things you've never tried before. So try it differently, whether it's stir fry or grilling or raw, whatever it might be, to incorporate more of those vegetables. Ayala, you wanna say something? Um, yeah, I was just gonna say, on that subject of you know of vegetables and, and variety, um, use, use the program for that. Type in a vegetable, if you know you like a vegetable, you don't know, or you wanna try something else, there's a search bar. Type the word in and you will find a thousand, I don't know, a thousand. You will find a ton of different recipes using that kind of thing. The two be mindset recipes are made to enhance the meal. Like when people say, um, well, I, I, can't, I don't know how I'm going to deal without carbs at night, right? There is a huge vast of options with vegetables that make it feel, a little like you said, eggplants more meaty and thicker and stuff like that. So use what you have at your, you know, at your disposal. And like Alana said in one of the office hours um, a couple of months ago in the Mindset Membership, try not to make that blanket statement of, I don't like veggies or I'm not a veggie person. Basically, what she ended it off saying is, get over yourself. Like, come on, we're all, we're all adults here. You can buy some vegetables. That, that's what like. she said. We're grown-ups. Yeah. Let's try to act yeah. like grown-ups. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, and what, what I also said was correct. Kid? Can I just be a kid for one sec and say, it's all about the accessories, guys. Like, you put the right dressing. Like, in my Shavuos cookbook, which will go out this week, I have a Parmesan cheese dressing. You put that dressing on basically anything and it's freaking delicious. So like, I'm such a kid. I have to like super like it. So if you're like, oh, be an adult, that sounds boring. That's not resonating with me. Be a kid and be creative and be like, I'm going to cut it into fun shapes or I'm going to make it look really beautiful on my plate or I'm going to use something really special to plate it and make it look really beautiful and aesthetic, like lean into your strengths and translate everything we're saying into that. Like if, if aesthetics are super important to you, then put your water in a beautiful mason jar with slices of lemon, like lean into whatever speaks to you and translate this entire call into that language. So also I'm gonna say, do the, re do the research. And I don't mean research. Um, you all have access to the food list when you signed up. Go into the resources you get at the beginning. There is a thorough list of veggies sitting there. There's also a list and there's things that might surprise you. So yes, corn, we know goes to the carb FFC department, but many of you didn't know that baby corn is a vegetable. And let me tell you, I can go through cans of corn, cans of baby corn, like there's no tomorrow. And if it's something you like, why not add it? 
find out what's on that list, find out what works for you. You may be able to, to see that there are things that, oh, I didn't know that falls under that quote. Butternut squash, FFC. Spaghetti squash, vegetable. So there are many things that until you look at those lists, you may have thought it might've been in one category and you discover that it actually works for you towards your veggies. So that's another thing. See, somebody just said, what baby corn is vegetable? Hallelujah is right. So there you go. One more person who has now been woken up to baby corn is a vegetable, not a FFC. That's where going into the resources, <laughs> two years on, on 2B. Anyway, that's why going into the resources are important. For those of you who have been on the program for two years, go back to the basics, go back to day one, go back to that little start here and rewatch Alana's first videos. It is mind blowing how many things the first time around we may have missed. Re-educate yourself and this time do it with a paper and a pen. Sit there and take notes because the things that you will pull from those videos, I, I go back regularly. I read her book. I've read reread her book now about three or four times. And I go back and I really do go into the website and I, I re-educate myself because there are things that sometimes I looked at from a certain point of view earlier in my journey. And as I made more progress before ever being a coach, I never intended, this was, uh, you can blame Danit on this call. She's the one who who pushed me to become a coach because she wanted to work with me. And I, I said, you know what? I'll be more accountable that way. But educate yourself because it gives you more variety. The people who come back and say, I'm really hungry. I'm not finding what to eat or I don't know what to eat. We can help you. We can advise you and guide you. But you know what you like to eat. And if you see it on a list and it fits into what you can prepare, you know, you've just made all prep work that much easier. Okay, so moving on from veggies, and I'm going to come back to everyone again. I'm going to say we're going to open it up again um, afterwards. The scale. There's no nice way to say, get over it. It is, I'm not saying it's not triggery, but it shouldn't be triggery. The scale is simply a measure of how you're doing that day. The scale is simply a way to track whether what you were, the choices you made were working towards your goal or not towards your goal. I understand when you're first starting out, we are not used to it. Many of us have been on other programs where we were told only get on once a week. Weight watchers, this, that, the other, but think about it, getting on once a week lets you make six days of possible bad choices before you find out. Or I get on the scale and say, mm, yesterday didn't really work for me. Let's look at that again. Let's make better choices today that maybe work better towards my goal. Getting on the scale every day helps you stay on track towards that goal. Am I moving further away from it? Am I moving further towards it? And if you expect it to look like this, going straight towards that lower number, you got another thing coming. Because I don't care, newbie, veteran, coach or not, all of ours goes up and down. There is not one person in this group that has had every way in in a downward motion. We all fluctuate. I don't care if it's hormonal. I don't care if it's emotional. Being real and realizing that life happens and it does sometimes affect what we do and how we eat allows you to be kinder to yourself when you step on the scale and lets you say, okay, the choices I made yesterday make sense with what I'm seeing on the scale. Sometimes it won't make sense. And that's when you can turn to a coach and say, okay, I don't get it. This is what happened yesterday. Can you walk me through it? Let's figure out why the scale was up like it was. It doesn't make sense. Okay, that's what we're here for. But getting on and being consistent is what's gonna help you answer that question. Lastly, tracking. Many people's favorite, and I say that tongue in cheek, the better and more accurate you track, the more likely you are to figure out what works for you. The more that you put in detail, the more you're able to go back and literally see meals that work for you. And know this breakfast with these doesn't work. Or the people who have a consistent breakfast, I'm one of them, who have a consistent breakfast and the only variables are the, the lunch and dinner, 
are really able to tell quickly which combinations are not working or which times of day are not working. And also when you find in, when you factor in your sleep and your emotions and your water and all those things in one page at a glance, it's not only about what food you put in your mouth. When you start looking at it holistically about what happened within that day and that 24 hours, you will have a better idea of why your scale did what it did. So that's, I'm gonna say the basics of the basics. I now wanna go back to the beginning and I wanna open it up to everybody. And I really, I'd love you guys to use the, the chat. People who are either newbies and are looking for advice or our veterans who I would love you guys to give advice to other challengers. And what we'll call on people from the chat. So start writing your comments, start asking your questions and we'll call on people to speak. What, and be specific, what worked for you to get water in more easily? So guys who are, people who are hitting their water on a regular basis, and I say it again, your minimum is just your minimum. More water, more weight loss. So I'd love to hear people add in the group, what are things that you did that helped you get more water in? So Yoni, can I just say something? Go ahead. Do you hear me? Do you hear me with my yeah, iPhone? Go for it. Go for it, Jen. Okay. One of the things that really helped me was buying a hydro band because like Yoni says, like we all have our all or are different water bottles for different things. And in order for me to actually understand if I'm one liter off or two liters down or three, what like I, I wasn't able to actually calculate that in my head. So like a consistent breakfast, it's literally a band that has like how many liters you do. And I personally do every time I finish a liter, I move it. Um, and it seems silly, but it was something that really, really helped me. That's true. I think also, I think also what's great about that, I think that what's behind that is finding the trick that works for you. So for me, it's word games, you know, thinking about like pairing things. And Alana said this a very, you know, very early on in the program, like three by three, if you have a one liter bottle, or for me, I'll do two by 12 or find that, put yourself time slots in your head. Like I know I will have three bottles by lunch. And then it doesn't even matter what time lunch is. Lunch can very often change or vary or different stuff like that. Like make these things that you think of in your head. You're like, oh, okay, so I'm not going to sit down to lunch until I finish having, you know, that, oh, it's three o'clock. I haven't had three bottles of water yet. Different stuff like that will just, they're called mind games for a reason and they work for a reason. So give yourself those, you know, those tricks. So I want to read some of them that, that actually were put in the group. And, and again, some of them different. Whatever speaks to you is what you should do. So somebody said that every X amount of cups is a treat, meaning their fourth cup would be a decaf coffee. Again, decaf coffee with stevia works towards your goal. Um, or cup six would be the lemonade. Lemonade would squeeze lemon and stevia into a cup, add ice water. That's towards your goal. So again, that's one way that somebody's getting in more water. Um, drinking tea with monk fruit. Another, it's a substitute that, that you can use instead of stevia. Um, being done with two liters by lunch, water flavored drops that you can get from iHerb, smaller water uh, goals throughout the day. So if, again, just like Ayala just said, by X o'clock, I wanna have this many liters in and then give yourself those goals throughout the day. Um, lemonade with iced tea, the same thing we've, we've said before. Um, let me see, 16 ounces before brushing my teeth. Give yourself a goal of how much you're gonna drink before each meal. Each meal should have water before it, about 20 minutes or so, half an hour before a meal. Have that eight ounce, 16 ounce, one liter of water. You will also see that you will not overindulge during that meal. So that's also very helpful. Um, interesting, one back to back, having a large bottle of water helps them drink more. Somebody said a smaller bottle of water with a straw helps them drink more. So whatever speaks, this is exactly the point, whatever works for you. I am someone, I need a massive thing. I know that if I drink, three of these, I'm at my minimum. And everything after that, you know, is gravy. Um, a straw, everyone keeps talking about a straw. If you are new to the program, drinking through a water bottle that has a straw will help you get more water in Can as I opposed to a, a open spout. The I other- Sorry about the water with the straw. Okay, sure. 
That's why, guys, movie theater, that's why all the big gulps come with a straw to get you to drink more. Like the companies, the soda companies know that if they get you to drink a big gulp and they get you to buy a bottle with a straw, you will finish it no matter how much soda you buy. And they will get you out to go to the bathroom. And if they get you out to go to the bathroom, they're going to get you out to buy a snack. And it is, they are using that you have to pee against you and you get to take it back and use it to benefit you. So straw. The other thing I will tell you is, and this, I, my challengers are finding is working for many of them. If you are someone who likes to drink cold, some people can drink more only when it's room temperature. Again, do what works for you. But there's always two. Because if I finish this one and I'm working, I don't want to get up to fill it. They're always sitting next to me. That was the game changing moment for me is that there's always the second leader ready. The second, the first one is done. I'm starting on the second. There's already a third one in my fridge getting cold. But if each time you have to go up and fill something, yes, make the investment into another water bottle. It's worth it. I mean, my husband may be ready to kill me because we counted 32 bottles in our house at the moment and we're only five people, but that's okay. I'm drinking a lot of water. So the point is at least have one or two bottles so that you have one ready next to you. Because if you have to get up to fill it each time, you're already gonna say, oh, I gotta finish this email. I gotta finish this work. I gotta, whatever you're in the middle of. But if you prepare yourself at least, at least with two of them, you know that those are two bottles that are gonna get in. So that's another way. Um, that's another way. Veggies. What are ways that you have incorporated more veggies into what you do? I'm gonna start very quickly. The first thing I do as I'm getting everyone ready in the morning, there's an entire tray of grilled veggies almost every morning that is in my oven before eight o'clock in the morning. And it sits there for me to pick at throughout the day in addition to, to raw veggies because I don't have to watch it. I put a timer on, I take it out. I have a whole tray of veggies to go. And this is something we were just discussing amongst the coaches a second ago. I actually salt my veggies because again, when you're drinking a lot of water, you can deplete your sodium. You can feel more tired. And by simply just salting your veggies a bit, I don't mean overindulging, you're putting that sodium back into your body that your body actually needs. So what do people say? Frozen bags of mixed veggies, for sure. There is nothing wrong with frozen veggies. Go for it if it makes veggies get more in. Buying an air fryer. This has been a very popular new... <laughs> Thing that many people are doing because it allows you to have that feeling of having french fries um, no but it's not even that can i just no, say something? Yeah. the most important part about the air fryer was that my kids are using it throughout the day it just becomes easy if they know they can take a bag of frozen broccoli or carrots or anything that's easy and throw it in the air fryer and that they will have food in 15 minutes as opposed to 45 in an oven it's been a game changer in the whole house. I'm not saying everybody has necessarily to spend the money, but in terms of, I didn't have an air fryer all these years. I just got one right before Pesach and it's been amazing. Yes, okay. and I'm just gonna add, I'm just gonna quickly add to that also. It's it's not to sell air fryers because I don't make any money on that. But um, it, it literally, if you're if you're gonna cut up two zucchinis for yourself, you're not gonna turn on your oven for that. So that's why we invested in an air fryer, not for French fries, just because it it does. You could do a smaller amount and less time. And on super saw, like I started buying the pre-washed floretted things. It's super easy to rewash in five seconds. Olive oil spray proteins. Also, I used to like not want to get out the frying pan and make a big mess to make some tofu. Like in seven minutes, the time it takes me to cut up a salad, I have stir fried tofu and like it makes your life really easy to put them over the veggies. Cause if you're going to take the time to cut veggies, you might not then you know, like you always want to look and see how can you multitask to make your life easier and keep it. Right. Um, I want to jump on that because someone else said it also. If you are someone who's moving around a lot and needs and is worried that you're not getting your veggies in, a bag of baby carrots. If you're in America and you're so lucky to have sugar snap peas, I would be downing those on a daily basis. I see the wallet nodding. Um, but honestly, the bad the veggies on the go, take them with you. Start your day. If you're if you're someone who works at home, cut up a container of veggies and have it sitting next to you. Instead of waiting till later, I have to get up. The more you do at that very beginning of the day, the more that throughout the day you will have something next to you to munch on, 
that you will not have to worry about making other choices because they're at a hand's reach. If you are- And creating, also let's, let, yeah, sorry. Now, I was just going to say, I want to give a shout out to the frozen bags of all the different varieties in Israel now. Yes. That's why I, I, all stir fries are great. Again, you have to be able to look at what you're putting into it. You have to not over oil or anything like that, but find what veggies you like. Make a stir fry with, with frozen veggies and throw in whatever protein you happen to like with it. And that's a great dinner. Right. Um, Can I also just add something I think is very important because you had brought this up. Yoni mentioned having the grilled vegetables out and you can snack on them throughout the day. This again, like everything else in 2B mindset, is a try track and see what works for you. Maybe your body does better with, you know, your three meals and not some grazing, even if it's vegetables. Some people are fine with the grazing. Everything needs to come down to, and Alana says this all the time, even within what you have, you can always figure out what to tweak to lose the next five pounds. Okay, so if let's say you were grazing and maybe that's not working for you, maybe don't graze or maybe you need to front load more veggies throughout the day when you're not. All those kinds of things. Don't stop trying. Oh, so let me let me just front loading. There are two things in the day water. that a lot of people have trouble with later in the day. Two minutes. Water and veggies. One thing I will say that you should concentrate on trying to get in in the first half of the day is your veggies most in your water. Because as you get to later in the day, we are more tired. It is harder to concentrate on having certain things go into our mouth. So yes, before lunch, those are the times to really concentrate on getting more water in, getting more veggies in. As far as the scale, just challenge yourself. You'll see that the more you get on and the more you actually stick to those four bunnies, it will move in the direction. Anyone who said that they're doing all four bunnies the way Alana has intended it to be done and the scale doesn't move, misunderstood some sort of explanation along the way. Because if you're doing it, and I never intended to be here as a coach, I've done this program the first time and I didn't do it right. You can decide when you are ready to take on all four of those bunnies. You will see progress. It, it is the bottom line. But it, it does take effort. Nothing worth it happens that quickly. And as far as tracking, challenge yourself. Start by just writing down your meals, getting them there, even if they're general. And as you do it more often, put more detail. I think, honestly, the, the, the basics, you know, some people get stuck on different things. And the more you dig deep and really just get those four bunnies, you will see success. So I wish you all a four bunny filled day or evening and reach out to your coaches. If you're having a challenge with one of those, we want to help you be able to reach it. And the group, because we're all here to see you succeed. Thank you so much, Yoni. What an amazing call. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you. Thank okay. you guys all Thanks, for showing Yoni. up. We are going to have an amazing, amazing week. And I'm so proud of